to lose access to crucial molecules it needs for growth, most notably oxygen. Obviously, the oak trees cannot move, and so to continue future growth, they produce acorns. These acorns can fall into streams and be transported to other places. If the acorn ends up in a hospitable environment for growth, it can grow into a tree and start a new forest. In much the same way as the oak trees, growing tumours are usually derived from epithelial cells that do not have the capability to move. In order for this to happen, the cells must undergo a dramatic change in shape to transform themselves into a motile cell. This process is known as the epithelial to mesenchymal transition, or EMT, and once it has occurred, the now motile cell can migrate through the normal tissues and into the bloodstream, transporting it around the body to sites where it can revert back to a stationary cell and initiate a secondary tumour, or metastases. Look at it this way. Different types of seeds have different optimal growing conditions, and so they will each grow best in different soil types. The same goes for different types of cancers, which favour certain secondary sites in the body. In over 60% of metastatic breast cancers, migrating tumour cells initiate secondary tumours in the lungs, liver or bone. At this point, the cancer is incurable and the treatment options are much more limited as surgery is no longer possible. With this in mind, my research revolves around finding a way to stop metastasis. By halting the seed from leaving or poisoning the soil, it could be possible to prevent this cell migration. My name is Henry Pegg and I'm a PhD student in the Paul Shaw Lab at the University of Manchester. It's podcast too, so I think we'll uh, get started. Hopefully the mic's uh, picking up okay. So um, there are no uh, scheduled uh, fire... Oh, what was that? Uh, there are no scheduled fire alarms go going off uh, today, hopefully. If we do have to evacuate, uh, the exits are at the front, uh, either side, and also the back as well. So if you're nearer the back, please exit from there if, if we have to. So welcome uh, to Manchester. It's still trying to be sunny and still trying to be nice. Uh, amazing weather and of course we have an open day and suddenly it starts to trickle with rain. Uh, back to business as normal, I guess, here in Manchester. Uh, you're very welcome if you've traveled from far away or indeed if you are local, have a look around our, our lovely campus. Uh, I'm Dr. Ruth Grady. I'm an academic member of staff here in the School of Biological Sciences. I am a, um, a microbiologist, and I'm also teaching and scholarship uh, member of staff. So I'm very interested in education and the education of our uh, students when they're here uh, studying. So in, in the talk, what I want to cover is first of all getting an interest in what our biological science is, to make sure you are thinking about doing the right kind of subject, and it's the right one uh, for you. Uh, and then I'm going to move on to talk about flexibility of our courses uh, and how they may differ from other ones, because obviously you have to make a, a decision on the UCAS statement. Uh, and I'll talk about things like field courses and placements, uh, and they, they may decide which particular flavour of biosciences you go into. I'll talk about entry requirements as well and the admissions process, and then I'll, I'll finish off with a, a, a think about what you can do with a degree in biological sciences. So thinking a little bit about uh, careers. Uh, now, of course, we call it uh, biological sciences here. Uh, and we define it as any study that contributes to the understanding of life processes. Uh, the same subject may be called uh, life sciences. Uh, it may be called biomolecular or you know, biomedical sciences. But generally, they're all encompassing the same thing, which is all about this idea of understanding uh, life. Is that distracting, that noise out there? Do you want me to shut the door? Yeah. We don't want to listen to people having fun, do we? No, it's just not on. <laughs> This is a lovely brand new engineering building. Where's the aircon? Honestly, it's just engineers, blooming act. Uh, not, 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 not meant for men, men, um, you know, menopausal old women uh, talking in here, I tell you. It's very, very hot. 
Uh, anyway, so we have 15 different titles for biological sciences. And all of them, uh, whichever one of these you want to do, or if you, you think, oh, I might like genetics or possibly neuroscience, it's just one choice on your UCAS form. So even if you're split between which one you want to go for, just put down one of them on your form. And whether you want the three-year equivalent or the four-year equivalent, okay, just put them down once. And the reason is, as I'll talk about in a moment, it's pretty much the same course in the first year, and then we have flexibility for you to swap, okay? So and the actual nuances of, of what the differences between the degree programs are can be found on our web pages if you, you look under the uh, Biosciences admission page. And there are drop-down menus, and you can see which units are compulsory and which ones may be options for some degree programs, uh, but not for others. And I'll, I'll give you some pointers as well uh, in this talk. So one of the things we need to think about in, in doing biology is, you know, wh why do we want to do it? I mean, it's interesting in its own right. I mean, who cannot like fluffy kittens and, and plants and trees? Actually, thinking about that, my daughter can't stand plants and trees. But most people love plants and trees, animals, uh, and what brings you into biology may be different from somebody else, but they're all going to you know, help us understand society. And see if you recognize yourself in any of these. Uh, you know, are you interested in the biological sciences because you really want to understand the world? You want to understand the environment that we're, we live in as, as humans and our relationship with animals and plants in the world. You know, maybe you want to find out what's on the bottom of the ocean. I mean, we don't really know. And as, as the boats go down and show us pictures, it's absolutely fascinating what is down there. You know, it may be that you're interested in the effect of climate change on the world and our environment and how that's going to affect how we live and work in the environment. Uh, thinking about food security. You know, how can we make sure we've got enough food produced for the population to be sustained? And as we'll see later on, we're going to be thinking about political um, issues as well. Sometimes making the food is one thing, and that's our biology um, part. But answering these big questions or challenges is... Uh, you know, thinking about working with politicians, uh, their economical decisions, uh, their maybe engineering decisions or physics uh, decisions. And we have to train our biological scientists to be able to work with lots of different people to get these things answered. And you may be drawn into biology because you're interested in, you know, human life. Uh, and you're interested in thinking about our development, you know, how we go from you know, one egg, one sperm, uh, all that cell uh, uh, cleavage that takes place, and we end up as a human with our arms hopefully in the right place, legs hopefully in the right place. Sometimes that doesn't happen correctly, uh, and we want to understand why, you know, all about what can go wrong with body development. And we need to think, oh, some people are very interested in thinking about growing new body parts. Uh, you know, a salamander, if you take a salamander, uh, cut its leg off, um, don't try this at home, uh, the salamander will redirect stem cells to that point where the leg was taken off. Uh, those stem cells will, will differentiate into limb cells and will grow a new leg. So within 10 days, the, you'll start to see a bud. Within two weeks, the leg is back normal working. We, we can't do that as humans. So we want to understand what's going on in these animals uh, that mean that their cells can do it? What factors have they got switching on these st stem cells that we seem to have lost the ability? Uh, you know, so we're very interested in that kind of thing. We're also interested in when the body goes wrong and later on in life people have neurodegenerative diseases. And we want to really understand what's going on with the brain. Can we reverse it? Can we stop it happening? Is it inevitable just because we're living longer, longer and longer? So that might be something that I think, yep, yeah, that's the subject for me. Uh, the other thing is there, uh, what about infectious disease? I mean, any infectious disease, pandemics, we've all, we've all been through it now. Uh, we want to understand what's coming next. What, uh, what can we do about it? Are there things that we haven't even thought about uh, that we need to understand? Our in immune system is incredible. And we know that inflammation, uh, which is one of the um, byproducts of our immune system, is involved with lots of systemic diseases. And we want to understand that interplay. We want to understand cancer, you know, uh, that it will affect many, many people. Can we cure all cancers? We can cure some of them, but we want to know, can we treat and cure um, all of them? And new treatments, new diagnostics, maybe you're very interested in pharmacology, you want to come up with some new drugs that are going to work well for these diseases. Okay, so all of these things are things that will bring you into biology. 
And one thing we want to train our undergraduates to do is being prepared for unknown problems. You know, we need to be flexible. We need to have a growth mindset in common uh, new terminology. Uh, and, and be, a, you know, we want to give people a background in all these biosciences so we can play our parts uh, in the world to hopefully get over these challenges. And as I say, there will be a need knowledge of biology, knowledge of other sciences, knowledge of engineering, politics, economics. And so we want to make our students uh, be able to work with other people uh, and so that we're not just working on our own thing. We are collaborating with other people. And loads of these questions are being addressed here in Manchester. We are a very big research intensive university. With, this is evidence if you look at our excellent performance in the last research uh, assessment uh, framework exercise. We did very well. I really recommend you browse through our research pages. I warn you, you will lose yourself. There is, it is a huge rabbit hole to fall down. Um, here are just some of the bits that we are um, particularly good at. You know, if you Google the uh, Manchester Cancer Research Centre, uh, this is a partnership between the University of Manchester, uh, so our, our faculty here, uh, Cancer Research UK, which is the largest cancer research charity, and the Christie Hospital, which is an NHS Foundation Trust Hospital in South Manchester. So we have the expertise here in Manchester to really tackle the challenges of knowing about cancer. And this then is fi fi um, filters through into our undergraduate programme. We have new units based on understanding cancer and tackling cancer. Uh, and, you know, our undergraduates learn, you know, how cells respond normally in the normal cell cycle uh, and understanding how they signal to each other and how that, that normal process, when it breaks down, that's what leads to cancerous growth and uncontrolled growth of cells. And then those cells break off and can move around. So we have people who are modelling cell cancer migration throughout the body using uh, computer simulations. Uh, and we have people using imaging techniques so they can see the cancers moving around. Oh, this is going to come on all the time, isn't it? Sorry about that. I have no idea. The visualizer isn't even on. Ba, ba, ba. There we go. Uh, yes, so, uh, you know, so ultimately it's, it's really important to do this kind of research. And all our research can then filter into our undergraduate programs. And similarly with biotechnology. You know, Manchester is, is known for being a, have it, playing a major part in the Industrial Revolution. We think about the spinning jenny and all that kind of thing, local cotton trade here in Manchester. Uh, but we're now at the forefront of a bio-industrial revolution. We know that we can't depend on fossil fuels uh, for the future. We need alternatives. And maybe some of those alternatives are bio in, in origin. Thinking about algae uh, or yeasts. Can we manipulate them so that they start to produce uh, lipids and fats? and those lipids and fats, and then a, an energy source uh, to replace oil. So we have researchers looking at that kind of thing. We have people in the school who are looking at growing plants so that they're bigger uh, and taller with bigger leaves so that we can maximize our food pro um, production without having to you know, use um, more land. And that will be very important in future as well. The Manchester Environmental Research Institute um, encompasses lots of different people from different backgrounds. Um, in particular, we have it's people in our school who are very interested in migratory fish, particularly their reproductive success against the background of climate change. We know fish go to spawn in the same place. Uh, if the um, ocean temperatures are rising in a particular place, what is going to happen to the fish? And what is going to happen to our food chain? You know, so it's really important to, to look at this kind of, um, these kind of challenges. These groupings here um, are very interested in, um, you know, the regenerative medicine network is thinking about can we repair or replace or regenerate tissue like the salamander, as I said before, um, and how do we do it? Do we use cell therapy? Do we use gene therapy? Tissue engineering? So lots of people are looking at that in, in the school. The Body Clock Center for Biological Timing. We have the largest body clock biological timing research community in Europe here, uh, in Manchester. And the, the tagline of the Centre for Biological Timing is understanding the rhythm, rhythms of life, which I think sounds so poetic and so lovely. I think if you go to it thinking it's going to be jazz or it's going to be drumming, you might be disappointed. But if you're going to it thinking, oh, yeah, I understand what body clocks are, and body clocks are thinking about the circadian rhythms. So this is the way organisms track 
the passage of time and adapt their biology accordingly. So it means that maybe our digestive enzymes are produced at a certain time, or maybe our pulse and our heart rates are lowered at a certain time. And we know that we need this for health, for our body clocks to be doing and our body to producing the hormones and working correctly so we can be well. If we disrupt our body clocks, we know this leads to disease. So it can lead to things like cardiovascular disease. It can lead to asthma, obesity, and even cancer. So understanding body clocks, whether you're uh, interested in genetics and you're interested in the makeup of those genes that are controlling the body clocks or how they're inherited, or you're interested in the outcomes about you know, um, changing the body clocks. Uh, so you're very interested in neuroscience, for instance, and, and bra brain uh, conditions. So loads of researchers are here interested in that idea of uh, timing. And in fact, anyway, man, if you think of a body part and you think of a disease, there'll be somebody here in Manchester who is, is researching it. So whether it's the kidney, the pancreas, the eye, the liver, that research is being done here. You know, we have the expertise. Now, if you're interested in something slightly different, uh, we have the Center for Historical Study of Science, Technology, and Medicine. And this integrates the science with the medical humanities and science communication. So it's, it's staffed uh, mainly by historians with a, who are interested in science. And this is to try and understand the social context of biology. You know, why do we do science the way we do? Why is it funded like this? You know, what's going to happen in future? So if you're thinking you may be interested in science policy and about why we're doing what we're doing, the ethics of what we're doing, just because we can, should we? Uh, you know, this, 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 these body of people who, who teach on our undergraduate programs uh, is very interesting for them. And the degree program of biology with science and society might be something that you're interested in. Now, other diseases, such as, you know, brain diseases, um, or inflammation for the arthritis research uh, center. Lots of uh, work done there. Uh, and also, uh, actually, that's a tell, actually, the Lydia Becker Institute of Immunology and Inflammation. So, you know, we're looking at vaccines for new diseases. Uh, we're looking at um, you know, new treatments, whether they're bacterial or they're fungal, viral, parasitic. All of these conditions are researched here. So a good you know, few hours looking at our research capabilities and thinking, yeah, I would like to maybe do a research project with these people in my final year. Or wouldn't it be nice if I was uh, taught some of these really modern and cutting edge science by some of these scientists or other people in the, in the faculty who are interested as well. So it, it, it's a really good study. It's very modern. Uh, it's always moving. And there'll always be something of interest for you. So in Manchester, let me just say how it's organized here. We have, as I say, those 15 degree courses. We take on 600, around about 655 students in, in a year. This, the um, capacity of this lecture theater, I think, is 550. So obviously, a bigger lecture theater than this for the first year units. Um, and we have over 300 teaching academics that contribute to the undergraduate uh, programs. And that means that they can talk, um, you know, teach on things that they're passionate about. So we've got a lot of staff, so people teach to their expertise and their interests. So you don't have to have lectures from somebody who isn't, you know, has just had to read the textbook the night before. You know, they are people who actually know about this stuff, which is, which is comforting. Now, we don't place any caps on the numbers for the in the different degree programs. Uh, you know, some of them are more popular than others. Biomedical sciences is our most popular degree title. We have you know, nearly 200 students who do that in the first year. Uh, whereas something like immunology, we may only have 10 students doing it in the first year. Some we get even lower numbers than that. But that doesn't matter because the mod it's a modular course, so everybody does the, all the units that people do, and most people do the same ones. Okay, so, and then you can uh, swap after the first year. So it means that even if there's only, say, you know, 10 immunology students, uh, the first year lecture on uh, you know, cell biology, there'll be 600, over 600 students in the lecture theatre. Because you're all doing the same thing. And that common first year means that you get a solid grounding in all the different biosciences. So you'll do something molecular, you'll do something biochemical, you'll do something that's on um, microbiology. 
uh, you'll do something that's on neuroscience or something that's on, on drugs. Uh, and some of them will be compulsory in your degree programme, some of them will be an option. And that's why you need to look at our website uh, and, and have a, a good, good look around and think, oh, yeah, that, that's really interesting. Of course, some of them are, um, you know, if you're doing biochemistry, you have to do some chemistry units, some advanced chemistry. If you're doing biomedical sciences, you might want to do them because you're interested in chemistry. And so you'll be able to do them as an option. But if you want to swap to the degree of biochemistry, you have to make sure you do those core courses in the first year. So you will get given um, advice when you're here about what would be good unit choices for you. Uh, and, and if you're very open, you just think, well, I'll ju just do all of these. And maybe some of your options may be from outside the faculty as well, which, which we can encourage too. If you come here without an A-level qualification in chemistry, then one of your options, you will do the introduction to chemistry units. Um, if you've already got a chemistry A-level, you don't have to carry on hardcore chemistry if, if you don't want to. And in this way, hopefully all our graduates will have a good grounding in the biosciences, and then that you can specialise later on. And we get all the students in round about March time, just before Easter, and, and have a good think and say, are you on the right course for you? If all the units you're choosing next year look like you're a neuroscience student, change the degree of neuroscience. If you're actually not that in, you, you thought you really liked neuroscience, but actually you've really got a taste for pharmacology, change to pharmacology. And that is very easy to do. Um, I mean, obviously with anything, there are terms and conditions, like you have to do the chemistry units if you want to stay on these ones in yellow. But by and large, it's quite a fluid transition there. And about um, a quarter of the year group do that. They do, they do swap what degree programs uh, they started out in. So one thing that you may want to swap as well is do you do a three-year degree or do, we, do you do a four-year degree? Um, the three-year degrees um, lead to a BSc honours in that subject. Uh, one of the most popular ways of making it a four-year BSc degree is doing it with industrial and professional experience. And this is where you do your first two years, you take the bioscience units and, and the optional units, um, and then during your second year, you will see advertised our placements because companies come to us and say, can we take three of your students next year? You know, so you don't have to find the placement yourself. We get the placements office, advertise them to the students on the placement year, and if you're interested in going for one of them, you go uh, apply for it yourself. So you may be interviewed, you may have to fill in an application form, you're interviewed for that um, position, and then during your third year, you will work at that company for that year. And some of them are paid, you know, some of them aren't, uh, some of them are just for the experience, but some of them pay really well. Uh, we send people to the Mayo Clinic in Florida every year and that they earn over $30,000 a year whilst they're doing science in the laboratory. Uh, some of them don't pay as much as that, but they still pay, pay quite a lot of money. So obviously they're competitive. And if you're on the industrial placement year and you decide, I don't really fancy any of these options, any, I don't really want to do this anymore, then you just don't apply for them. And then you'll just drop back to the three-year degree. So we're not going to make you go on placement if you really don't want to. Uh, we had one of the ambassadors who was helping us out uh, a couple of years ago. He, he was on the placement year, and he was applying for some of the placements. And then he got a girlfriend and decided he didn't want to go on a placement anymore, and he wanted to stay in Manchester. That's the kind of decisions people make. And he, and he was fine. That, that, was, that was right for him at the time, which is good. So, so that's what you can do, the industrial placement. Then you come back for your final year, and you finish off all your final year units, do a project, and you'll graduate with a BSc with industrial or professional experience. And that experience is really useful. It's really great when you're then applying for a job, because you've had a whole year working for a company. And it may be that in that year, you think, I love this, this is what I want to do. I want to come back, I'm going to finish my degree, I'm going to go into a PhD, I'm going to do this research. Or I'm going to go and work for this pharmaceutical company because I want to work in regulatory affairs in pharmacology because that's really interesting and I love it. Um, or people come back from the placement and go, mm, it was all right, but it's not for me. I think I want to do something else. And again, that's really valuable experience. If you know at the age of then 20, 21, that you don't really fancy doing X, then, then great. It gives you that added um, thing that you can look for in a job. The other way you can do a four-year degree, um, or actually, I should say, to stay on the industrial placement year, we give it's the same um, entry qualifications, 
but to stay on it, you have to get over 60% in your first year and your second year. So if academically you're, you're not um, cruising through the course, then you will be removed from the industrial placement year. Uh, if you want to do uh, your degree with a modern language, so that could be French, German, Spanish, Italian, Mandarin or Japanese, you will have to have an A-level in, in the European language. If you want to do Japanese or Mandarin, you don't have to have an A-level in that subject because it's quite difficult to do that here. But you will need to have an A-level or baccalaureate equivalent in a, um, some other language. Uh, and then your options then in, in your first year will be taken up in the language school. So you'll do our bioscience units and then the optional ones will be languages for you. Uh, and then the same in the second year, you need to be, get over 60% to stay on with language. So because you have to do these language units in first year, they're not available for other degree programs. So that means you can only start year one with a modern language degree. You can't move on to it in the second year. So that that option is not available. You can move off it. You may do the languages for a year and just think, mm, I, don't, I don't want to do that anymore um, and go back to the three-year degree. But when you're doing the modern language, your, your third year, you go on a placement in a university that we find for you. We have those guaranteed. So if you're on a modern language degree, you're guaranteed to go abroad for that year in a country that speaks that language. And if you're lucky, you go to Switzerland and you get the skiing in, in there as well, which that's not something we can really offer uh, in Manchester much. So if you're good at languages, go for that. Uh, with entrepreneurship, it's, it's similar to the language degree, you, but instead of doing language units, you do business enterprise units that are taught by the business school. Uh, and so they're, they're quite, quite nice, quite fun, um, but they're not compulsory or, or even available for the other degree programs. So again, you have to start on the with entrepreneurship um, and get a certain, get over 60% to stay on it. And then the placements that you do are the same as the with industrial professional experience. They're advertised. If you see one that you want to go on, you can um, take that placement. They could be in a company where you're doing something more businessy, um, maybe a marketing company, or they could be in a lab and you're getting lab experience as well. And then you come back and finish your fourth year again. So I think I've got a graph here showing where we've sent people on placement in, in the last few years. Um, there's 150 people out at the moment on, on placements that will be coming back in September. So lots of them are in Europe. These are lots of the language placements. Or in the UK. So you don't have to go to far flung places. You can do it your um, placement year in Manchester, in, in a company in Manchester. We've got two people at the moment in uh, medical writing companies who are doing sort of science communication activities. Um, here's the Mayo Clinic. We're sending a couple of people to Nebraska as well. Um, I think this placement here in Alaska was they, they self-arranged that one themselves. They actually had the contacts. They were looking at wolves or something like that. So you can self-arrange a placement year. You will have to run it past our placement office to make sure it's suitable and that you're not being exploited and you know, you're not just working for your dad somewhere. Uh, you know, so we do have to vet it to make sure it is um, a, a suitable uh, placement, but that is perfectly acceptable to do as well. Uh, so the last way of doing a four-year degree um, is with, um, oops, sorry, I'm too far there, is the integrated masters, and these, these are becoming very, very popular. Uh, and the idea is to do the first two years the same as the normal three-year course, um, and then in the third year, you don't do the final year project, you start doing some research skills uh, bioinformatics, uh, looking to, you know, getting uh, working in a laboratory in Manchester. And then in the fourth year, you've made contact with a, uh, a principal investigator, one of our re research uh, laboratories, and you work in that research laboratory for the whole year. So you do a whole year of lab science in my, here in Manchester. And because we know the, the quality of the science there and we know how much you're doing, we know that that's worth a master's degree. So you will graduate then with an MSI, an integrated master's. And this is a really, really good thing to do, especially if you want to go to a PhD. Because if you think you want to do research, this is a whole year of research in a lab, and it really will you know, work out, is this something that you want to do? There are no exams that year other than putting in your project report at the end. So it's a very, very good introduction to research later on. I mean, some people will do a three-year degree, 
and then they will do a master's afterwards. So they'll do a one-year master's course either here or in another university. And that's a perfectly valid thing to do as well before going into a PhD. It's now very, very difficult to go straight to a PhD with, from just three years. You will nearly always have to do a master's, whether it's this integrated variety or it's a three years plus, plus one. And again, to stay on the integrated master's, you do need to have a certain grade in your first and second year over 60%. And then the numbers are capped, actually, for the integrated masters, because we only have a certain number of positions where people can do it. And at the moment, that's at about 70 people. So even if you've got over 60%, if more than 70 people want to do the integrated masters, it, it will be on, on marks that people get. Now, so far, we've not had to reenact the cap, but that's not to say that's not going to happen in, in future. But they're all, all really good training uh, for whatever it is you, people want to do. Okay, so this is, uh, field courses are something that is an attractive option uh, to come and study biosciences. And this may be a reason why you might want to opt for zoology or for biology or life sciences as opposed to any of the others, because field courses are only available for these three degree programs. Uh, they're compulsory for zoology. Um, that you can do one in year one and one in year two. Um, and they're optional if you're doing biology or life sciences. They take place in the Easter break or at the beginning of the summer holidays. Uh, they do cost money, but if you find yourself thinking, oh yeah, I, I'd like to go to Costa Rica um, in the rainforest and look at the frogs and the butterflies, uh, we, we, we go there. Um, we go to Malaysia, uh, to Tiamen Island. This year that was for the first time. We have one on animal behavior in South Africa, um, one in Mallorca, uh, one in the Italian Alps, and we have one in uh, Scotland as, as well, looking at um, marine biology in Scotland. So these, are, you know, uh, you can go on these field courses. They do cost money, so there is a cost but, um, to them. Uh, so we're upfront with, with the fees, so before you decide which ones you want to do. They are subsidized, obviously, but uh, there, there is a cost. Because they are compulsory for zoology, we also offer free field courses as well. So we have free field courses that are in Manchester itself uh, and in, in the local area. So, so don't be put off if, if you think you don't want to spend money on a field course. But they, they are a lovely thing to do. So people who've been on field courses, you know, there's about 20, 25 people will go with a couple of members of staff. Um, in, in the sunshine. You know, it's, it's a great, great thing to do. And if you are interested in animals or plants, then I would say opt for the zoology or biology uh, options. Okay, so that's a three and four year degree thing that you can do. I'll just talk about the application process now and where we're up to. So for those of you who are applying for 2024 entry, um, most people will have the deadline of the 31st of January to apply. Um, the earlier deadline in October is if you're applying for medicine, dentistry, veterinary science, or for Oxbridge. Um, so if you apply to us early, we will look at your application and we'll give offers as soon as we can uh, process them. Uh, you are no more likely to get an offer if you apply early in October or if you apply on the 31st of January itself. So they all get treated exactly the same. Um, and we'll try and get... Um, the offers out as, you know, as, as soon as we can. And what happens is that our admissions office look at the UCAS form that you've filled in. We just check you've got the right number of GCSEs, which here we're only really interested, have you got maths and English? You know, um, we're not going to make any particular um, um, rules on what you get for your GCSEs. We're very interested in what your predicted A-levels or baccalaureates or, or whatever qualification you're doing is. Um, and we'll look at your personal statement just to make sure it matches up with the degree program that you've applied for. Uh, so we're not looking for anything in particular in your personal statement. We'd like to see something that's uh, you know, well-written, um, that shows motivation for why you're studying this subject. Uh, you know, tell us about your work experience, that's nice. Whether it's work experience in, in a science context or it's you know, working in Primark, it doesn't matter. All work experience is good. Um, you know, have you won, um, read any interesting books? Have you watched any particular TV programs that's really got you into biosciences? That's fine. Tell us about your EPQ if you're doing it. Uh, EPQs are really interesting uh, to read about. They're a great experience if you're doing them. Uh, we don't make them part of our formal offer um, at all. 
um, but it, it's a good, very good thing to do. If you tailor your um, application to medicine or to veterinary science, we will ask you outside of the UCAS um, program to provide us with an alternative statement, okay? So we always want it to match up um, with what you're doing. And th this is mainly because we want to stop people um, who, who make a mistake, who are looking, you know, say they want to do pharmacy and actually they've applied for pharmacology and they're two very different disciplines. So we're, we're not looking for anything particular. We're not giving you points for having loads of work experience. We just, just want a, you know, a statement that you, you, you've tried to write and it reads well, but it, it's not going to form part of our decision whether we give you an offer or not, really. It, it may just trigger us to have a conversation to say, are you sure you've applied for the right thing, <laughs> uh, basically. Um, but what we are interested in is your predicted grades. And we will base that off on your predicted grades. So the minimum offer we will give is AAB, and the maximum offer is AAA. So if you're predicted three A's, we'll give you an offer of three A's. If you're only taking one core science, and then taking, say, psychology, geography, or PE, um, your offer will be three A's, whatever your predicted grades are. And those are the only, the only two offers um, we are giving. If you're doing four A-levels, we will only give you an offer on three of them. So we'll choose which three. It will generally say we want you know, an A in biology, A in chemistry, and then an A in maths or, for maths or further maths, or whatever it is you're doing. So if you're doing four, we're only, predicting, we're only offering on three. If you haven't done enough sciences, um, you haven't done any of the core sciences, we may give you an offer for the foundation year if you're doing different A-levels. And that, that's a year where you're at university, but you're doing biology, chemistry, and maths as a sort of concentrated course. Um, all offers are subject to our contextual offers as outlined on our website. So if you know you are eligible for a contextual offer, uh, you, it will say on the offer well, what that is, whether it's a one or a two grade uh, drop. And what happens on, on results day is we, you get your results on the Thursday. Uh, you'll have to go to school to get your results. They're the only people who can tell you what they are. But on the UCAS um, access point, you will find out whether the university you've put as your firm choice has accepted you or, or not. Uh, and that's because we get the results on the Saturday before. So we've got quite a few days to play around with the data. And what we do is we get the results in. Anybody who's made their offer, they're in. If we've got places left, um, people have dropped a grade, they're in. If we've still got places left, we've dropped a couple of grades, they're in as well. Now, previous to COVID, we've usually been able to go down even to ABB, and we, we've given people places on that basis. Since in the COVID years, we had a lot of people who made a 3A offer. So actually, we, were, we, we couldn't take anybody with drop grades at all in the last year. But we're hoping that the, um, exam boards, board, the exam boards have told us that they, they want to replicate what happened in 2019. So they want to have the grade distribution to match what happened in 2019. Um, so chances are we will be able to give people places um, if, if they have dropped a couple of grades. The difference is we can't guarantee it at all. Um, but we'll, we'll see what happens this August. Um, I mean, that, that's for the people doing their A-levels this year. So we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens and see if, if this actually does, does come true. Now, when we've given you an offer, um, we will invite everybody to an offer holders day. Um, we run several of them from March uh, onwards. Uh, and so you can come up to the university, uh, we'll show you around the labs, we'll do something in the labs with you. You'll have a tour around with a, an ambassador and you can ask them loads of questions. So this is where you can really tie down as, do you want to do the MSI or the industrial placement year? Uh, do you want to do, job, um, do you want to do zoology or do you want to do biology, that kind of thing. Uh, so you'll have a good, good chance to come back and have a look at the university. You don't have to come to the Offer Holders Day. It's, it's purely uh, a voluntary, but I, I think it's quite nice to see around the buildings um, you know, and, and tour around and see where you may be actually working when you're here. Uh, and, and so what we'll ten, tend to find is we give out offers. About 1,200 people will, will put us as first choice. Um, and then on results day, we'll find places for roughly 700 students, including some for the foundation year. Okay. 
So I'll just talk briefly about a typical week. I mean, this is a typical week that we think um, a science course has. Of course, when you talk to the ambassadors, they may give you a totally different version of what a typical week is. Uh, lectures around about 10 hours a week in lecture theatres like this, where you're timetabled and expected to come. Um, the lectures last for 50 minutes. All of them are recorded, so you can listen to them afterwards. Or if you're ill on a Monday morning at 9 o'clock, you can't quite make it. There's usually a recording that you can listen to afterwards. Very good for revision purposes, too. Sometimes there may be recorded material that you're expected to have listened to in a lecture slot time, and then um, later on in the week you'll come into the lecture theatres in person and do some activities, question and answer sessions, revision sessions, going over the material. Um, so around about 10 hours a week. Lectures can be from 9 a.m. Um, and can then finish at 6 p.m. So they could be scattered throughout the day. Wednesday afternoon is still kept clear for sports, if, if you want to play sports. Uh, practicals around about five hours a week. That could be online activities, learning some techniques, then coming into the laboratory, having a go at the, um, with the apparatus and the equipment. We build up the hours. So in the first semester, there's less hours in the lab. Second semester, you're in more. By second year, you're in for blocks of four weeks in three days a week. Uh, so that when you go on placement, you have the skills necessary to work in a, in a lab uh, so that you won't be embarrassed or, or not know what to do. So by the end of second year, you'll have some very, very good lab skills. Uh, tutorials, uh, you'll be in a tutor group, uh, and this is one of the reasons why you may want to choose one degree programme over another, um, because you'll be in a tutor group with 10 people, um, and your tutor will be from that degree discipline. So if you're interested in pharmacology, the other people in the group will be pharmacology-interested people too, and your tutor will be a pharmacologist. Whereas if you're in something like biomedical sciences, your tutor could be from any of the degree disciplines. So I'm a microbiologist. I'm also a biomed side tutor. So when I set an essay, I will set it on a topic of microbiology. Uh, now, you may be very interested in cardiac physiology or something like that. Um, so maybe if you know that you've got a big interest, you know, do physiology. Because the essays, the papers you read, the presentations you'll be asked to, to give will be on a topic that you're probably interested in. Now, it may be that you like it all, so actually you quite like the idea of being in a lucky dip, so you don't mind what branch of biology or what branch of biomedical sciences, which is more human biology, you go for. But in those tutors, as I say, you, know, you learn how to write an essay, you learn how to give a presentation, you learn how to do some, we go with some data handling, um, and it's a chance to learn those kind of skills that aren't content-based necessarily. We're not going through lecture material, but it's a chance to get those skills so that when you go into the world of employment, you've got something useful uh, to offer that. So it's around about 20 hours of timetabled time in the timetable. Too many times in that sentence. Uh, so about 20 hours a week, we, we kind of think we know where you are. And then 20 hours a week, we're expecting you to do work on your own. So whether it's in the library or one of the learning spaces. If, if you've got the door here, the engineering building has loads of little spaces where people like to work. Uh, plug in their own laptop and off, off they go. So I'll finish off just talking about careers. So this is the uh, last two, three slides, last three slides, I think. Uh, what do people do with a bioscience degree? And the answer is, it's quite mixed. You can see this nice big purple piece of pie. We can't have a science talk without a, a pie chart. Uh, so these people in purple here, 35%. So a good third go off and do further study. So you've done your three-year degree, and then you do a master's afterwards. Or you've done your four-year degree, and you go into a PhD. So they want to take that biochemistry knowledge, that pharmacology knowledge, and carry it on and do research, and hopefully end up in a research career or do, do something post-PhD. 14% um, will go off and carry on in bioscience, but will be working in a lab straight away. So whether they're NHS labs, pharmaceutical labs, so they're taking the lab skills they've got and they're carrying on with it too. Quite a few people will go do postgrad in something else, whether it's a, a law or you know, accountancy or do, do some kind of thing like that. So they'll carry on academically, but not necessarily in bioscience. Quite a few people go off and, and do medicine after doing a three-year degree with us. That will be, they'll either apply for postgraduate medicine, which is a four-year course. At the moment, Manchester doesn't have a postgraduate medicine course, but we are hoping to get one together. I think from 2025, it's in the, in the pipeline. Um, but other universities do have a four-year postgraduate medicine course. Some people will go on, of course, and do a five-year, the ordinary medicine course after a three-year degree as well. 
and quite a few people go off into teaching. So whether it's as teach first or going and do a PGCE. So they're taking their, their science skills and, and going back into education to, to help other generations. So you can see this big pie, piece of pie here in blue. These are people a third of the year who have done a science degree, very specialized knowledge in a bioscience, but they've decided they don't want to carry the bioscience knowledge on, so they go into a graduate job such as you know, the NHS or in, in administration there, um, maybe working in the civil service, um, being a management consultant. You know, one, of, one of the big co the companies, BT, Royal Mail, you know, they want graduates. They want graduates who um, you know, can write, who can do presentations, who can use those skills that are in their degree. It doesn't matter whether it was in law or biochemistry or history. Can you take complex information, learn quickly, summarize it? They can train you on the job. They can train you to do these things as long as you have that core knowledge of how to find something out and put it together again. And so a lot of people do, do these kind of uh, uh, jobs. Uh, you know, so our, our students have gone, you know, work places like AstraZeneca. So you may not be in the science side of it. You may be in the legislation side of it, you know, the uh, law, legal, ethical side of drug companies. Um, BBC, National Trust, NHS, uh, going, uh, working in, a, in an animal, animal sanctuary, working in conservation, uh, working for companies like Unilever, whether it's in product and design or whether it's in marketing. And all these kind of companies people can go for. And to get help on, on the way, um, we recommend all our students think about our, um, our career service. So you can look at this online now, and you can see that because we're such a big university with so many students, we have a massive group of alumni. So people have gone off into all sorts of jobs, and they will come back and give talks to our undergraduates, or they will do panels where people can ask questions about how do you get into this industry. And the big companies come and do big recruitment fairs. Uh, our um, university career service has been voted the best university career service for the last few years. Um, it is vast, it's very good. And our university graduates are well sought after by these graduate employers. So if you come to the University of Manchester, you know that you will be very desirable in the workplace. If you come here and do a bioscience degree, you will also be very, very desirable. Uh, so it's a very good career uh, to go into. So that's all I've got to say um, about the, how the course has been organized and, and how we do it here. Um, the, the chat with the students in the Michael Smith building, hopefully most of you have managed to be there already because it is actually shutting, I think, at, at quarter past three. So there probably isn't time to go over there and, and talk to them now. However, I will be available for questions here if you have any particular questions um, about your own circumstances or about the degree programs. <laughs> Of course, you can always look at our bioscience uh, course web pages that tell you what the different options are. Uh, and I would recommend you read our research website, and it'll get you excited about science and think, yeah, that, that's what I want to study, and let's go and do it in Manchester. OK, that's all I've got to say. Thank you very much. So I think we can actually exit from either door now, um, but if you have got a question, please do come and have a chat with me.